Um, so I want to just really quickly try to say a little bit about um, how I got to self-help to do what I'm doing now, a little bit about what we're doing, and, and then why I'm so passionate about our particular work and model. Um, so Brit oh, let's see, how many do I have to click? Um, Bridgespan talks about bridgers going from the corporate world into the nonprofit world. Lots of you have done that, and I am a bridger. At self-help, we talk about boomerang employees who start, leave, go do other things, and come back. I'm one of those, having been at self-help right before I came to business school. Uh, but I've bounced around so much that I really feel more like a <laughs> pinball um, going through and more seriously, I have bounced back and forth a lot, and I think doing so, one, has been really rewarding for me, and two, really helped me do what I do. Um, and, and I think it's safe to say, Jonathan said this morning, I've now found my calling, so I don't think I'm going back. Um, so what do we do? Um, Self-help is a, a Durham-based, 30-year-old community development financial institution, does a lot of the same things Eric talked about. We've loaned or invested $6 billion in a little over 30 years in all kinds of community development activities. Um, and I rejoined them in 2006 to launch our effort in California. What we're mostly doing in California is trying to build self-help federal credit union into a statewide billion dollar financial institution focused on the needs of low income communities. Um, we have done uh, just a couple things about what we're doing. Um, we've grown really rapidly, mostly through merger. We've done seven transactions. We're now at just about 400 million in assets. We've got 18 branches, um, about 50,000 members that we're serving. Um, and our goal is to be about two and a half times that size. Um, we're trying to do things differently. The scale we're trying to create is different in and of itself. There aren't community development credit unions that large, and we think that's an important innovation because we can get, and get some of the economies of scale that bigger financial institutions do, but devote them to low-income communities. Um, we're also trying to redesign product all the time. The big banks design around their wealthiest clients so they don't serve low-income people well, which is why there are over 30 million people in, the, in this country that don't have bank accounts or have them but barely use them and use check cashers because they're just not well served by what's out there. Um, but probably our biggest innovation is that we're trying to develop a whole new branch model for reaching unbanked populations and we're calling it the micro branch. Um, and what we're really trying to do is create a very convenient, um, comfortable place that looks a lot like what they're using currently so they don't have to change their behavior to change their institution but then give them a path into the financial mainstream with mainstream products and services. And it's just a pilot, but we're, we're very optimistic. Um, just about why I like what I do, and leverage used to be a dirty word, but I'm gonna use it to talk about why I like what I do in the nonprofit sector. Um, when, I la when I was thinking about what to do next and knew I wanted to do something in the social space, I was, I really wanted to start something. I mean, I had the Silicon Valley itch. I wanted to be a social entrepreneur. But when I looked at what I could really do to make a difference, I, I figured out that by building on a foundation, a great foundation with an organization that was already doing great stuff, I could actually do more. You like my little graphics there? Um, and we could never be where we are today if I had actually launched on my own. Um, we also, we try to employ financial leverage. So, we are part of a nonprofit. We raise philanthropic capital, but it's for capital. And then we can leverage every dollar of donation we get into $10 of assets in low income communities because we're a depository, so we raise deposits. And then, oh, there's that part. And then, because we're a sustainable institution, we use that leveraged capital to work forever because we don't need further support to continue doing what we're doing. So, uh, to me, that's, that's powerful. And then the last is strategic leverage because even if we serve 200,000 people, which is great, I hope we do, we'll do great work, but like Eric said, it's gonna require system change to really change the landscape. And we try to do that by proving models that others can replicate and also by using our experience in the field to both inform and bring credibility to our advocacy work. We have a whole arm of people that do advocacy around responsible financial services.